Hey, what's going on, guys? John here, tuning in for Streffer Paddock. Obviously, Manchester United have just taken the fattest of defeats against Wofford, a 4-1 smashing Harry Maguire sent off. I flew 10,000 miles from New York. I've had, I've had cotton swabs up my nose, up my ass, up my ears, every single place you can imagine, and I've had to fly all the way out here to Manchester. I was, I was sat next to Andy. I sat next to Jay. I sat next to Joe, and I had to watch that. It was absolutely despicable. It was a pathetic... It was a sad performance, and it was a sad day for Manchester United fans. It seems to be like all these... He's gone. The writing's on the wall. It's been on the wall. We've been saying it for time and time and again, and that performance just pretty much encapsulated the, the, the performance, the status of Manchester United right now. I thought that, I really said that in the previous show, when we were talking with uh, um, Jay and Joe, we were talking about how we need to make sure we don't let Wofford just crawl into this game and just absolutely press us from the opening five minutes, five, uh, ten minutes, because that's exactly what they're going to want to do. They know that Manchester United have this capacity to completely capitulate. They look shell-shocked many times this season, and that's exactly what happened but I thought Manchester United had some sort of glimmer of hope. Obviously, that first time, the first half was like what, thir like five minutes in. There was a penalty. Um, he, there was an encroachment call, and they had to retake it for some reason. And David Hey, I, I believed it. You know, go check that. Go check that preview show. I believed that he made that double save, and I was like, wow, maybe Manchester United, the good vibes can potentially come come back to see this game. But it just seems to capitulate over and over and over again. And it was just a very, very difficult game to watch. Midfield 2, we saw McTominay and Matic. Why in the world Ole Gunnar Solskjaer continues to rely on these two Ents. If you guys ever watched Lord of the Rings, they're fucking trees. They just walk around. They, they walk like half a kilometer, uh, like an hour. It's just ridiculous speed. They never seem to want to play up the ball. They never seem to be the third man, the second man option. That's what a midfielder is supposed to do. You need to be the shuttler. You need to be able to step in, slide into the pockets, take the half touch, turn around, get the play going, recycle possession. The fundamentals seem to be lacking in McTominay. The fundamentals maybe Matic has, but his legs just can't seem to keep up. And it looked so shocking in midfield today. I just felt like, wow, Manchester United are a shadow of what the hell's been happening the past few seasons or so. Because, let's face it, as much as we've been roasting all the other social, things have been pretty good for for majority of the, the his tenureship. We've seen good vibes return. We've seen good things come from Manchester United. But, man, today's performance just pretty much sealed the deal for me. Unfortunately, I just think all this time at Manchester United is up. The only difficult question is, who comes next? I just don't know the answer to that. We were talking about Brendan Rodgers, and I have no idea where in God's ways is Brendan Rodgers' name came, came up from, but that cannot happen. That seems to me like it's not any... It, there's no upgrade to that whatsoever. Some people were talking about Zidane. Some people were talking about just dumping money on uh, Hen, uh, uh, Ten Hag. Some people were saying get uh, Ragnick on. I don't know who is going to come and fix this. I don't know who's going to come and settle this ship once again because I think it's just such a difficult answer. And I think for Manchester United fans, frustration is obviously the word, but it's also difficult to kind of understand where do we go from here. Uh, I just All we know for sure right now is that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's time is up at Manchester United, and unfortunately, um, things are not looking too good for the Norwegian. Uh, a couple of good things before I wrap this up. I thought Donny van de Beek and Jaden Sancho in particular were fantastic. I say many times in, in my previews, in my reviews, whenever I'm talking on YouTube, I always say the word football frequency. And the, the, what I mean by that is the ability of the footballing IQ of certain players to be able to link up with each other, the awareness, the understanding, the movements, reading each other's vibes. Donny van de Beek and De Jaden Sancho have that. We saw glimpses of Donny van de Beek show us that when he played alongside somebody like Juan Mata, who, mind you, obviously seems to be, a, you know, his, his career obviously has gone down in terms of his uh, prime passing. But he still has his quality and he still has his IQ at the end of the day. And we saw glimpses of that, their connection earlier on in the season. Donny van de Beek showed us today that he does have the quality to perform on that pitch I have no idea why uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer continues to rely on his system and continues to rely on the same crop of players that continue to just absolutely stink it and shit it up the park all the time. But if there's one thing I can say that was positive today was Donny van de Beek and uh, Jaden Sancho. They looked lively. They looked up for it. They showed the quality. They showed the idea. They looked like they wanted to do something on that pitch. And, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, a fantastic uh, setup for that assist. But other than those three that I just mentioned, I just feel like it's... Dark days for every Manchester United player in, in that squad, as well as uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his, uh, squad, uh, his coaching staff. I just don't know what to, where to go from here. But anyways, that's it for me, guys. What do you guys think? Make sure you guys let us know in the comment section below. Who do you think Who do you think can take over? Who do you think can settle this ship? Who do you think can save Manchester United at this point? I have no idea. You guys let me know. You guys are much smarter than me. Um, I'm pretty much out from here. i got to go back, take a couple more swabs, and that's pretty much it for me for today. Thanks, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Guys, you guys got to show Adam love for this because this is not easy. Um, anyways, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you guys have not yet done so. Hit that like. Hit that notification bell so you guys are always up to date on when we drop new content. And that's it from us today. Take it easy.